13 Historical Black Women You May Never Have Heard Of Shirley Chisholm Chisholm was a pioneer for African-American women holding major roles in the government. Chisholm first served as an educational consultant for New York City's Bureau of Child Welfare and ran for New York State Assembly in 1964. In 1968, Chisholm was elected as the first African-American congresswoman and later became one of the founding members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Chisholm made history once again in 1972 when she became the first African-American woman of a major political party to run for the Democratic Party nomination. Anna Arnold Hedgeman Hedgeman was an advocate who worked with religious organizations and within the government to mobilize the civil rights movement. Hedgeman became the first African-American graduate of Hamline University in 1922. She later worked for a number of religious organizations, most notably the Young Women's Christian Association. Hedgeman also held various roles in the government, including working on Harry S. Truman's re-election campaign in 1948 and serving in the cabinet of New York Mayor Robert F. Wagner from 1954 to 1958, the first African-American woman to do so. Hedgeman was also instrumental in the planning of the historic March on Washington in 1963. Jane Bolin Jane Bolin became the nation's first black woman judge in 1939. She was the first black woman to graduate from Yale Law School and would serve on New York's family court for four decades. Besides dealing with many domestic cases, she worked to stop probation officers from getting assignments based on the color of their skin. During her career, she also worked with Eleanor Roosevelt to create a program that would intervene before young boys committed crimes. Amelia Boynton Robinson Boynton Robinson has been recognized for her tireless civil rights advocacy in recent years including a portrayal in 2014 Selma, but many may not know just how pivotal a figure she was. Boynton Robinson began her civil rights activism in the 1930s, when she started advocating for voting rights after becoming one of the few African-American women registered to vote in Selma, Alabama. Boynton Robinson became the first African-American woman in Alabama to run for Congress in 1964, and the following year, she helped Martin Luther King Jr. plan the march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama for March 7, 1965, now known as Bloody Sunday. Boynton Robinson and the roughly 600 demonstrators were forcefully attacked by state troopers with tear gas, billy clubs, and whips. Boynton Robinson was hospitalized after the march and a horrific photo of her injuries was widely circulated. Later, in 1965, Boynton Robinson was invited to the White House when President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act, and in 1990, she received the Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Medal. Dorothy Height Height has been called the matriarch of the civil rights movement and often worked outside of the public eye. After receiving two degrees from New York University in the 1930s, Height worked for the New York City Welfare Department and then became the assistant executive director of the Harlem YMCA. She was involved in anti-lynching protests, brought public attention to the exploitation of African-American women working in slave markets, and escorted First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt to the National Council of Negro Women a council she served on for more than 40 years. In the 1950s, she lobbied President Dwight D. Eisenhower to take an aggressive stance on school desegregation issues. Hyde also worked with Martin Luther King Jr., and she stood on the platform with as he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech in August 1963. Alice Allison Dunnigan Alice Allison Dunnigan was the first African-American female White House correspondent. She was also the first black female member of the Senate and House of Representatives press galleries. Her love for writing began when she was 13, penning one-sentence pieces for the Owensboro Enterprise. She became the chief of the Associated Negro Press in 1947, which would allow her a year later to become the first female African American to follow a president's campaign out on the road. While she had to pay her way to cover Harry S. Truman on his Western campaign trail, she would finally receive the respect she deserved when John F. Kennedy was elected. She would serve as an education consultant of the President's Committee on Equal Employment Opportunity until 1965. Diane Nash Of the many accomplishments Nash has made in her lifelong commitment to civil rights activism, 
Her most famous contributions include her work organizing and leading freedom rides and sit-ins. Nash, who was born in Chicago, got involved with the civil rights movement when she enrolled at Fisk University in Nashville in 1959. In April 1960, she helped found the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Nash also coordinated the Nashville Student Movement Ride, which was part of the Freedom Rides in 1961, coordinating between her fellow students, the media, and the Department of Justice. She engaged in sit-ins herself, even spending time in jail in February 1961 in solidarity with the Rock Hill Nine, nine students that were imprisoned after a sit-in. Nash also played a crucial role in the desegregation campaign in Birmingham in 1963 and received a Rosa Parks Award from the SCLC along with her husband in 1965. Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler Dr. Crumpler was the first African-American woman physician in the United States. Born in 1831, Dr. Crumpler first worked as a nurse in Massachusetts between 1852 and 1860. She was accepted to New England Female Medical College and earned an MD in 1864. She practiced medicine in Boston and Richmond, Virginia, primarily working with the poor, who had limited access to medical care. In 1883, Dr. Crumpler published a renowned book, Book of Medical Discourses in Two Parts, which many believe is the first medical text written by an African-American author. Irene Morgan Kirkcaldy and before both Claudette Colvin and Rosa Parks, there was Irene Morgan Kirkcaldy. In July 1944, Morgan Kirkcaldy was arrested after she refused to give up her bus seat to a white passenger in Virginia. She was convicted in a county circuit court, but appealed the decision to the Virginia Supreme Court and later to the Supreme Court. With the help of lawyers from the NAACP, including Thurgood Marshall, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Morgan Kirkcaldy on June 3, 1946. While southern states largely ignored the ruling, Morgan Kirkcaldy's case was a pioneer in civil rights law. Morgan Kirkcaldy received the Presidential Citizens Medal from President Bill Clinton in 2001. Claudette Colvin Nine months before Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white passenger on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama, a then 15-year-old Claudette Colvin did the same. On March 2, 1955, Colvin was taking the bus home from high school when the driver ordered her to give up her seat, according to NPR. Colvin refused, saying she paid her fare and it was her constitutional right, but was then arrested by two police officers. Colvin later became the main witness in the federal lawsuit Browder v. Gale, which ended segregation on public transportation in Alabama. Wangari Mathai Wangari Mathai became the first black woman to win the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize for her environmental work in Kenya. She was also the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a doctorate degree. Mathai served as the chairman for six years on the National Council of Women in Kenya and introduced the idea of accomplishing the largest tree planting campaign in Africa, the Green Belt Movement. The organization has planted over 51 million trees in Kenya since its founding in 1977. Daisy Bates Bates was a civil rights activist best known for her work on behalf of the Little Rock Nine. Bates and her husband founded the Arkansas State Press, a weekly African-American newspaper that advocated for civil rights. In 1952, Bates became the president of the NAACP's Arkansas branch, and in 1957, Bates fought for the Little Rock Nine, the nine black students who were attending an all-white school as part of the school's desegregation. Bates escorted and advocated for the students amid intense opposition, and is honored by the state of Arkansas with a state holiday on the third Monday of February. Ella Baker Baker was a civil rights activist who worked for a number of organizations throughout her lifetime. After graduating as valedictorian from Shaw University in North Carolina, Baker moved to New York City to help start the Young Negroes Cooperative League. She started working for the NAACP in 1940 and co-founded the organization in friendship to fight against Jim Crow laws in 1955. In 1957, she was asked to help organize Martin Luther King Jr.'s Southern Christian Leadership Conference and also helped form the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, which became one of the biggest human rights advocates in the country.